life taker artifact that was um, that was something we had to respond to right away once we became aware of the issue. Uh, you know, it was doing an invalid damage type, and it was like going around all of our systems, basically, like you know, negating shield blocking and. All sorts of terrible things, so we had to actually turn it off uh, temporarily, but it will be uh, turned back on for the 4.16 update. Hello and welcome to Forge and Turnum, where we talk about all things New World. This is an episode of Balance of Power, and uh, we're going to get into combat. We're going to be talking about all sorts of uh, upcoming um, combat changes that we have that are going to be coming up in the May update. Um, but before uh, we get into the details, I wanted to start things off by just uh, recognizing the community feedback we got on our last episode. Uh, we didn't have a lot to share that was new at the time. Um, and going forward, we're going to actually only do this show when we do have new things to talk about, things that we really wanted to share with the community. And with that in mind, we have a, we have a full show ahead of us. We have lots of things to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to start out, though, by talking about um, uh, the Season 5 launch. Uh, I know we, we, we talked last time about uh, our, our changes to the scripting system, and there were a lot of uh, issues to come out of that, like as expected. We are definitely looking at all these uh, reports. Uh, we have, it's, it's our number one priority is to, to fix things, to get things feeling like they did uh, before Season 5. Um, and we'll be pushing out fixes over the next coming updates. Uh, to, to jump into details on uh, what's coming up in May, um, so uh, could you talk a little bit about some of the, the like what, what's like some of the, the highlights of, uh, of the upcoming uh, changes? Uh, pretty good amount, but one of the, the first ones we're gonna just jump right into is siege weaponry. Um, we've been aware it's been Pretty lackluster, basically since shortly after launch, uh, basically players have out-leveled the damage that most of the siege weapons can do, so we're doing a pretty big, good bump to it, increasing the power by around 50%, give or take, some are a little bit more powerful, and we may end up doing some more buffs down the road, but just doing this little uh, little test first to see how it plays out and then where we go from here, but yeah, buffing pretty much every siege weapon and war, invasion, and outpost rush, and just increasing their damage. Um, the AOEs that are persistent on the ground that do dots are gonna last for an extra second. Just get that extra tick in along with the extra damage. And hopefully that'll kind of branch out uh, what's used on the war fort, war and invasion forts to just not be a bunch of war uh, horns. And so, yeah, trying to mix it up. We're also uh, decreasing the cost of the ammo resupplies so you can refill them a, a little bit cheaper. Uh, it's hoping that that kind of mixes up the combat a little bit, makes it feel a little bit more interesting, gives a little bit more diversity to it than just what's currently being used. Yeah, I know one of the, the reasons um, I often like try out a siege weapon and then hop out again is because I'll just get like focused and you, you go down so fast because you're kind of like a sitting duck. Is there anything like, are we thinking about anything changes around that? Not gonna be in the same update with all the other stuff, but that's something we're looking into of trying to see if we can give some sort of like resilience or fortify or something while in it. Uh, potentially long-term, we might add some sort of like shields type thing just to make it a little less risky to just put your head out and be headshotable once you're on those, on those weapons. Cool. Um, so something else that uh, I think happened in uh, the, around the season three time frame was we increased damage a lot, uh, and that has resulted in taunts not being as effective at drawing aggro. Can you talk about like some changes around that? Oh, yeah. In uh, pretty much most uh, kind of higher level PVE modes, uh, player level just DPS has just gone up a lot, and uh, the taunts and threat system didn't really follow. So we're basically just increasing the amount of threat generation that you get from anything that would generate it. So if you have the gem slotted in or anything that would generate more threat, it's just gonna be a little bit more powerful. Uh, as, as well as we're adding uh, taunts to melee heavy attacks. Basically, there will be a very brief window, like you're not gonna get like an eight second taunt like you would get with Defender's Resolve, but brief window of taunt um, to just make sure that you can kind of keep the aggro going, but it'll be enough to kind of like keep it going, but not too much that you can just only rely on taunts to keep the aggro, but it'll make it just easier to kind of maintain it and properly manage it until we can get some sort of more visual update to, to the whole threat generation and taunt system. Cool. Uh, so let's, let's jump over to artifacts. Um, you know, we're always looking at data for artifacts um, and, you know, in combat in general. 
looking for kind of trends. And uh, uh, this time around, we, we were looking at the armor artifacts, right? Like what were what did we find out there, and, and what changes did we make? Yeah. So uh, the main we're, for this specific one, we're addressing two of the artifacts, which are the absolute least least used armor artifacts, which are the winged leather shoes and magnetic magnetic gauntlets. And uh, basically, they were somewhat relatively easily obtainable. So their obtain rate was relatively high, but their usage rate and the unlocking of all the perks on them was relatively low. So for the wing shoes, um, we're just adding additional functionality because it used to just be hastes uh, last longer. But now uh, you're going to be able to get a damage bonus whenever the hastes are active. So add a little bit more functionality to that. And then the magnetic gauntlets, were, which were the ones that gave you increased crit chance, but your crit damage went down, which kind of interesting play. You get to trigger those on hit or on crit effects more often, but the downside of just losing so much crit damage was a pretty high cost and trade off. So now instead of it being a 50% crit damage reduction, it'll be 30%. Okay. Um, let's move over to equip load. Um, we had a lot of uh, changes to equip load balance in the last update, and we're going to be making some revisions to that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so one of the big ones, uh, we got a lot of feedback on this one. So we tried to kind of make equip loads kind of more interesting, give the different trade-offs. And so we wanted to make medium more neutral and then heavy and light have those trade-offs. And one thing we did, we adjusted the CC duration status effects, which we heard the feedback. We're going to revert that change. And so it'll go back to where it was, where light has no reduction, medium has 10%, and then heavy has 20%. Still think long-term, we want to like kind of look into more equip loads and like interesting ways of doing that, but we'll probably examine some additional ways that aren't, don't feel quite as punishing as a change we previously did. Um, we also heard a lot of feedback about the heavy, heavy equip load tower shield just having a little bit too much block stability in some circumstances. So uh, we don't want to adjust actual shields on that, so we're going to just reel in the uh, block stability percentages from 15% to 10% on both heavy and light. Cool. Uh, so moving over to perks. Um, so like we're always looking at perks and like how, um, you know, like how, how desirable they are. Uh, what did we find out? I think uh, shirking in power was one that we saw was, was not being used uh, very, very often. Yeah, there's a lot of other perks we're going to keep looking at in the future, but shirking in power is one kind of examine the certain types of categories and uh, exclusive labels on perks. And under the shirking category, they all have a relatively decent usage um, across the various types, but shirking and power was a little bit lackluster. So especially when you're trying to compete with other things like shirking heels. So we're just uh, buffing the empower you get from that. So it used to be uh, four stacks of 4% and it's gonna be three stacks of 7%. So a little bit easier to get to that full uh, full value or the full max amount, and then that max is going to go up by about six. Okay. Um, now let's move over to talk about like individual weapon balance updates. Um, so the bow. Uh, why do you hate bow users, Josh? Uh, that's because I am one. <laughs> no. Um, uh, basically, the bow is just a really strong, powerful weapon. Um, it has good strength where you kind of can remain safe and get some really high burst damage while being relatively far away from the normal engagement. But one thing that it kind of is really strong at right now is it has both dots, so sustained damage and burst damage from just high damage attacks and just dots being constantly put on them. So we're doing a slight nerf to two of the dots on it, which are the poison shot dot and the rain of arrows barbed arrow upgrade. So we're just kind of reeling in the damage on those just a little bit. Don't want to basically like nerf any weapon to the ground or anything, but so the poison shot, uh, we're reducing its duration by just a couple seconds because it just has a high damage part. So it's going to be the higher damage, shorter duration, and then barbed arrows is going to be a little bit lower damage, longer duration. So barbed arrows is being reduced from 15% to 9% and then keeping its full value or its full duration. And then uh, poison shot will be reduced from 10 seconds to seven seconds. So just a couple ticks on that one. If it ends up being too high or kind of mess with the bow's playability, we'll re-examine it. But just for now, the bow just has a lot of strengths. And so trying to address those a little bit. And we're, we're totally, like all of these things are not just based on like our gut feeling, like we're, we're using our data, our analytics to kind of like validate our, our assumptions, our, our, our hypotheses. In this case with the bow, uh, what was the like indication in the data? I'm just curious, like what did we see there? Uh, just uh, we have a lot of our data. It breaks down the damage types, usage, and where the damage comes from. 
and Bo had really high kind of burst damage from just the actual hits that they did. And then their sustained dots, especially with a lot of the other artifacts and perks that are coming out that increase the duration of these. And so the bow having both the kind of really high burst damage with just dot ticks that could just keep going. Um, we're just kind of slightly reeling in the, the dot aspect of it just because other weapons kind of handle that dot thing. Like a fire staff's a really dot heavy weapon. So don't want the bow to kind of be as powerful as the fire staff's dot aspect of it. Well, also having the burst damage it has. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, so moving on to the Blunderboss, uh, what sorts of changes did we want to make there for the next update? Uh, this one is just for the Blunderboss perk uh, net sh for net shot, exhausting, exhausting net shot. Um, one thing that was just off is the tooltip showed 60%, but our clamping for exhaust is at 50%. So one thing the tooltip was already misleading, and it showed 10% higher than the value actually was, but um, exhaust is a pretty powerful, um, pretty powerful just perk or status effect. And so we're going to reel that value in just a little bit. Uh, so its max value is going to go from 50% to about 41%. Um, ideally, we still want the perk to be used and have some value, but just not quite as strong, especially with all the bursts that the Blunderbuss does have. Okay. Uh, so what about the Fire Staff? Fire Staff is uh, actually one of my favorite weapons, um, and I actually use, I use Flare quite a bit. And I know we, at one point, we reduced the damage of flare um, because we thought it was a little too oppressive, especially in like wars and like you know situations like that. Uh, but I, I guess we've made some changes there. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, just a slight bump to flare. Basically, it was really strong. We nerfed it, probably over nerfed it a while back because um, it was uh, basically the flare trade off would be initially it was uh, you now your heavy attacks do an AOE but your damage got decreased. And so it went down to 110, and then we're now bumping that to 120. So just uh, when we initially put Flare in, it was just one of the highest or like most damage events style weapon in our data, um, constantly used. And so we, yeah, ba basically got feedback that it felt too strong. So we reeled it back and then maybe just reeled it back a little bit too far. And so, yeah, just kind of bumping it up, nudging it. We don't want to do any massive changes like we used to do where we over nerf or over buff something and then we have to go back and reel it in. So we're just, yeah, kind of slightly tiptoeing it up to get it to a, kind of where it feels good or it feels useful, but it's not too oppressive. And I know Firestaff is pretty strong right now in season five, um, but that is partially due to some issues that we have and, and we're, we're looking at those. Um, and sometimes it's hard to get a, an accurate read on the balance because of these issues. And that's why it's even more important that we do, uh, you know, try to fix these as, as quickly as possible so we can kind of have a better idea of like what's a real balance issue and what's just a bug that we yeah. need to fix. Um, cool. Uh, so moving on to flail, uh, what changes did we make for that? Uh, so one, one thing we're changing on the flail is one of the big feedback we get from it is just the overall flail DPS is relatively low, which was intentional just because it has so much extra utility. Uh, flail is a very versatile weapon. Um, yeah, there's so much survivability and there's healing with it. So it's kind of intentional to kind of have it have low DPS, but maybe it's just a little bit too low. So one thing we're doing to kind of work on these little tiptoe balance changes is the leader of the pack passive, which is the one that has kind of a dual purpose. So uh, it initially would do small damage increase if you're by yourself, and then it would give empower to your allies when you were around other allies. And so we're just bumping those numbers up a little bit. So you're self damage when you're alone is gonna go up from 10% to 15%, and then the empower, um, that one's gonna go up from 5% to 10%, so a slight buff there. And then we're gonna just keep kind of re-examining the damage. Um, overall, the flail's utility is kind of, I think, the most important part of it. So we don't wanna end up making the DPS so high that we have to nerf some of the other utility aspects of it. So we're gonna just keep looking into it and seeing what we can adjust. Uh, so let's talk about Hatchet. Um, so there was uh, uh, some changes to Keen Berserk, I see, on that. Yeah, that one. So Berserk is just a really useful ability, and then we have some fixes coming in in the future. Not sure exactly when, what release will be a part of, but we are fixing some issues with the uh, Berserk stuns um, and the uh, like Hatchet aim throw aspects of it where like the canceling got weird. But for Berserk, uh, for it being such a useful kind of core foundation of the the weapon, the perk usage was pretty non-existent. 
Um, and most of that was due to the uh, the fifty percent health cutoff because you don't want to like let yourself get too low health so that you can finally use a perk. So we removed the health condition on it, so you, it works at any point. And then we adjusted the values and lowered them a little bit, and then adjusted the functionality. So now it's just your overall crit chance and crit damage is going up when you're using Berserk, if you have that perk. Um, and then you don't have to worry about the health requirement and the uh, the values are gonna be a little bit more in control right now. Or the max will be around 20-ish percent. Uh, so the musket, uh, we did a lot of uh, rework to the musket in season three, and I know, uh, you know, cha you know, changing it from hit scan to projectiles. Uh, but there were some leftover things that made, you know, may have like come with it, come with that transition, like aiming being one of those. Can you talk about some of our changes around the musket and trying to make it more usable? Yeah. So the musket is a kind of a hard weapon to balance, mainly just because it's like that. Uh, kind of difficult to learn when, but once you master it, like players get absurd with a musket. Like I'll never be as good as most of players with a musket just cause they're, they're way better than me. But um, the thing we're trying to balance with it is kind of give it more usability without making it too strong or too oppressive in wars. Cause, or war, not wars, OPR. We were all there in the OPRs where it was just a musket just kind of ruined most people's experiences. But we also don't want to make the weapon miserable to use for the people that want to use it. So we are going to remove the uh, accuracy penalty for when you're rotating the camera. That's one of the big usability things where if you're aiming at it, as long as you're accounting for the, the travel time and the bullet drop, um, you don't have to worry about that accurate inaccuracies when you're rotating the camera. So that that's definitely gonna be one of the bigger changes. Um, we're also doing some kind of usability updates with some of the, the functionalities like stopping power. Kind of a pretty fun one to use, but yeah, just maybe we wanted to buff it. We redid one of the perks recently for it, and so one of the, what the perk did was it added additional pushback, and so we did rework the perk just because it wasn't that desirable in its previous state, and so we're just adding the push like additional pushback to the base functionality of it. So that'll be I think right now it's three meters. It'll go up to five, and then uh, the ultimate on the left tree I think it was called Dead Eye. That one we are going to add a little bit more usability to it. Right now you have to get two headshots to proc it, which is. Uh, pretty pretty heavy condition when you get two headshots in a single shot. So now it'll trigger just off hitting two targets, um, which will kind of make it more functionally usable for more players, um, kind of lower that barrier to entry a little bit. Um, and then uh, the right tree ultimate, uh, where there was a condition where it only applied to the right tree abilities, and that's just now going to apply to any of the musket abilities. Great. All right. Uh... So what about uh, what about the rapier? Um, what, what what changes do we have in store for that? Uh, yeah, rapier, the good weapon, really useful to use in many different situations. But one feedback we got uh, looking through our Discord and just player feedback is weirdly one of the most uh, kind of powerful abilities, but was one of the uh, least used perks for it. It was a deadly uh, deadly flourish perk. Um, right now, it just does a damage boost, which um, kind of a high percentage, that's like 40% damage. Functional usage of that is not that strong. So one thing we're adding to it is that part will still be there, but now it's going to also apply the rapier bleed with that perk, and that'll just help trigger the the finish aspect of it a little bit easier, let you get bleed stacked a little bit easier, and just give a little bit more value to that perk. Cool. Um, and what about the spear? I see uh, we got quite a few changes coming in for that as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, some people may be a little upset with this. There, there are going to be a decent amount of nerfs on this one. Um, hopefully not enough to make it feel miserable. I love the spear. It's a fun weapon to use. But some of the the, the kind of utility it had, because it had really high DPS and just a ton of use utility. Uh, yeah. So one that we're going to change is for the evasive maneuvers passive. Um, right now that applies to all dodges for two seconds, and we're going to make it the next dodge with two seconds. I think that's still enough to make it feel useful, have some really good value, just not be like too strong. Um, and then that combined with the invigorating crits passive, um, that right now is you just get flat stamina on a crit, which is incredibly powerful because it can apply to like Cyclone and just every other hit. So instead of it just giving you flat damage, it's going to give you increased stamina regen for a brief period of time whenever you get a crit. Um, so hopefully enough to keep it, keep its value, kind of maintain its purpose, but not become that thing where you just, you never have to worry about, uh, stamina. Um, and then the fortifying perforate perk, perforate does a lot, 
Um, it's a good ability, it does half damage, and then it just applies so many status effects. So one we're gonna initially look at is uh, the fortifying perforate, uh, just reducing its value, hopefully enough to make it useful, but not, not oppressive or not too powerful. Um, that's kind of our main goal is we want most things to have a purpose and have a value, but just not make it necessary or um, too strong compared to other choices. Okay, cool. And so uh, you talked a little bit about this for the for the bow, kind of like um, what we were seeing in the data with the spear. I know uh, I'm pretty sure we we're like it was at the top of the list in most modes, right? For like usage and like so. What was our was that like like what was the 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 findings there from the data that that led us to these changes? Yeah, uh, kind of main ones are yeah da data focused in oh, most modes. The spear was kind of like either in the most used or most damage events triggered, uh, even weirdly sometimes most damage done. Um, and then that combined with just all these extra effects it had, um, which granted the spear, I think its, its main purpose is DPS, so we don't want to just directly go after that. Um, so they're kind of looking into adjusting the, uh, the utility aspects of it. Um, again, one of, still one of my favorite weapons, so don't want to kind of ruin it, but just need to make sure it stays. Mm -hmm. um, kind of parallel with most of the other weapons. Cool, and uh, that brings us to the sword and shield. Uh, this one, uh, these changes might be a little controversial because uh, as I'm sure everyone knows, the sword and shield is very strong and, and very well, well used, um, but we're actually uh, suggesting some buffs here. Can you tell, tell me about the reasoning there? Uh, yeah, so like you said, really controversial. Uh, sword and shield is a very versatile weapon. Uh, in terms of its functionality, but for the most part, if you're going to be playing a PvP mode with a weapon, you're going to just see three abilities used every single time. And so we want to kind of buff the other things to kind of give you a little bit more choices and kind of mix up what's being used. So Defender's Resolve is going to get a little bit of a buff. So we're improving the taunt that it has, um, kind of changing how quickly it activates. So the, the status effect that's applied when you activate Defender's Resolve is going to be activated a little bit sooner. Uh, the cooldown we're reducing a little bit, not too much, because you know, that survivability you get from it's going to be strong, but trying to hope for that we can kind of keep, um, keep its value going and give it a little bit more purpose uh, outside of the, you know, the three abilities that most people use, which are the Shield Bash, Shield Rush, and Leaping Strike. Um, we're also increase the final upgrade to Defender's Resolve. The healing there right now, it's max health, and we're gonna change it to base health. So instead of it being 15% max, it'll be 30% base, and kind of open up the, the amount of equip loads and different builds that, that that upgrade will be useful with. And then Whirling Blade, we're doing a change there. Um, Whirling Blade's a hard one, just because it does kind of compete with the final attack uh, in the light attack chain. So we're increasing the radius to just make it, if you're in a crowd, you'll most likely hit more targets with Whirling Blade. Um, and then maybe down the road, we'll look in this kind of how to improve Whirling Blade's value a little bit more. And I noticed there's a missing uh, ability from, from this list, which is uh, Reverse Stab. So yes. what, what, are we, what are we planning for that one? Uh, that was intentionally left out because in our next upcoming balance patches, uh, we're not gonna do anything with Reverse Stab, but down the road a little bit, we're actually gonna just rework it entirely. Um, we'll probably keep a lot of the similar like upgrade functionality and, and stuff, but just a better animation, make it easier to hit, and um, excited to see how you guys respond to it once you can finally see what it'll turn into. Yeah, we, we think that that was uh, one of the main reasons why uh, it was a lesser used ability, right, was because of the, like, the long wind up and like, it just it didn't seem very usable in, in a lot of different PvP scenarios. It, yeah. yeah. Even just thematically, the looks of it, you're like, I'm going to turn around and point my back towards the target. And even though it didn't really, like, you couldn't get backstab from using reverse stab. But, yeah, it just didn't, didn't really fit well. The, yeah, it just wasn't that appealing of an ability, even though Feng Shui had some pretty good upgrades. And So all you reverse stab lovers, get, get, your, <laughs> get your usages in now while you yeah. still can. Cause, I'll, I'll both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then the last weapon uh, that we wanted to talk about for for this uh, update is the Warhammer. Um, so, what what changes were made there? Yeah, Warhammer. Uh, that's a, a good kind of a similar to the Sword and Shield, where for the most part people use the same abilities. So, trying to buff the other ones that kind of make them more value. Uh, kind of it's one that's happening a lot is Mighty Gavel. We're just increasing its damage from 170 to 190, and then uh, the upgrade to check for your target's health. That's going to be bumped from 130 to 150 to just give it more damage. Um, 
Warhammer right now, it's really useful and really strong with CC. So if you can stagger stun them, it's fantastic. But then it's normal abilities um, that don't quite have that similar value. So just bumping up damage on that ability, kind of give it a little bit more purpose. Great. And I also wanted to kind of recognize that, um, you know, we, we, we covered a lot of weapons here, but there are some that we didn't cover. Uh, do you want to talk about just like the reasoning why some of these weren't touched in oh, this yeah. update? Yeah, Great Axe, uh, that one in Season 5, uh, as you all saw the artifact, probably one of the most fun artifacts I've used so far, uh, the Tempest Fury, that is going to give a lot more value to Whirlwind. Um, and then we also buffed the base Whirlwind functionality a little bit when you don't have the artifact, because you want to spin to win, but then if you have the artifact, you get all the cool spins, but then without it, it still felt pretty lackluster. So we, we buffed that, and we want to kind of see how that, just the overall weapon changes play out just for that one, like once we change that one ability, because that'll change up how you can chase, potentially how much damage you do, how you get away from fights, yeah. So we're gonna see how that one plays out. Um, Wood Gauntlet's another one. Uh, that one is one that's uh, called out a lot and currently in live, because there's some like desync issues, some bugs that are being called out that we're trying to address, so we're just kind of spending time working on the, the bug functionality aspect of it. And then Life Taker was one where uh, we have a bug fix coming in for that where it was just doing more damage. Um, and so, yeah, kind of like fixing some bugs and issues that were called out related to that before we just start like diving into the balance, especially since uh, we also did buff its base damage in a previous update. Yeah, actually, um, let me interrupt you. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I forgot to mention this. Uh, yeah, Void, so the uh, the Life Taker, Life Taker artifact, that was, um, that was something we had to respond to right away once we became aware of the issue. Uh, because it was actually, uh, you know, it was doing an invalid damage type, and it was like going around all of our systems, basically, like you know, negating shield blocking and all sorts of terrible things. So we had to actually turn it off uh, temporarily, but it will be uh, turned back on for the 416 update. Um, another one, life staff. We didn't talk about this. Uh, life staff is kind of a hard one to balance because depending on the mode and the situation, it's like simultaneously overpowered and underpowered depending on when and where and who's using it. Um, and so we've talked about this in a previous video, but we do want to kind of update the trees. Um, we just have to make sure we get the, the design good, we get it balanced really uh, in a really interesting way. And so we didn't do any balance updates so we could in the future look in the kind of reworking the trees. And then Ice Gauntlet was a final weapon that we haven't talked about. Uh, actually, well, Ice Gauntlet and Great Sword, but Ice Gauntlet, there's a bug that we're looking into now about uh, the cooldown reduction. Uh, in Tomb is triggering multiple instances of it. Kind of gonna fix that, and then we did some other balance updates with it recently. But yeah, just gonna keep doing some examining because Ice Gauntlet's one of those weapons that has a lot of utility. Damage is kind of lackluster because of that use of usability, and we just wanna kind of keep examining it before we keep any making any changes. Um, and then Great Sword, final one. Great Sword's yeah, really strong, really useful weapon arguably overpowered in certain situations, but um, we're kind of looking into that more. We know the artifact for the Greatsword Serenity is kind of in that state where it feels like it's kind of the must use. You, you probably should be using that artifact. Um, but yeah, trying to examine what we can do to make the kind of give a little bit more diversity to like what item or yeah, what item or which, which version of the Greatsword you're gonna be using. Um, and so yeah, just looking into that but it is just overall a great sword. It's like a pretty, pretty strong weapon, pretty useful, and still just the yeah, examining it. Awesome. Well, that was a lot to cover and uh, definitely a lot to look forward to um, coming up uh, in the May update. Um, and that brings us to our community question. Uh, so what we'd like to know is actually uh, of those weapons that we didn't uh, cover in, in this coming upcoming update, uh, what would you most like, like to see with those weapons? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please let us know in the comments what you thought about the show. We'll see you in Eternum. <laughs>